on this extra long episode, we are pushing to finish the game. Everybody got that? We're speedrunning this. And we might be cutting some corners. Getting a little bit lazy. Ah, laziness. But in the end, only one step remains. So that's all that is left to do, just make the game and make the game. Mm, hi everybody, this is Christian. This is Laziness Academy. This is Advanced Map Tutorial. It ends today, episode 95. We're gonna do some major cleanup and I decided that we're just gonna go do a push. We're gonna push through all of the stuff. We are going to bring the game to a point where we can start actually doing the actual final level. Let's go, this is gonna be a beefy episode. All right, so we have we have some lists in here. I will uh, amend this list of doing things. So first of all, I wanted to um, do two bigger gameplay things. First, I want to have a direct bomb, a bomb that explodes without going into hyper. Um, so uh, if you don't want to deal with hyper, then you, you can skip the hyper. And also, I wanted to also change a hyper shot. I want the shot in Hyper to be just different. I think it's, this makes sense. I don't want to be just like a different color, but it's the same otherwise. I think I want to have a change of gameplay there. So these are going to be the biggest changes in terms of gameplay that we want to add. Then we're going to do a um, HUD, oops, HUD glow up. We're going to... I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, I'm gonna. There's a little issue that I want to fix. Um, I want to uh, have audio ducking. Uh, we're gonna talk about it in a second. Uh, basically, the idea is that um, I don't like how sometimes important sound effects like going into hyper they get cancelled because there is was like a small sound effect like shooting or hitting an enemy that overrides it, and I want to avoid that. And as maybe part of the glow up of the hut, I also wanted to do a little visual tweak. I want to fix um, option muzzle flash, right? I, want, I just want to have, I want it to be smaller. I want it to be an uneven number of pixels and so forth. And then there's a bunch of menu stuff that I want to do. Uh, letting go of buttons, maybe a better way to center text. Maybe that's going to be part of it. Definitely high score. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, th that's the, the thing that I wanted to do. Yeah, that was the note that I, I want to update the option flashes. And, yeah, and finally, we're just gonna go over the other editors, make sure that the MSPR and the other editors is also updated to the newest version. All right, let us begin with the direct bomb. Um, so I don't know if I need this. In my playtesting, this I didn't actually use it that much, but maybe that's a gameplay issue in terms of like, maybe there's like, um, not enough incentives to do that. Maybe there's a visual issue. Maybe it didn't look as exciting. Maybe it's also like a strategy issue. I just like, uh, I, I was so like in tune with going into hyper that I didn't see the advantage of maybe doing just like a regular bomb. I'm not sure. I'm gonna edit now. And if in further playtesting we realize that it's never actually being used, then I'm gonna remove it again. But I think it's good to have. So the idea is that in hyper, so here's where we go hyper, right? And we have the sound effect and everything. In hyper, uh, this is the hyper while, right? In hyper, if we press the bomb button here, then we immediately cancel going into hyper and immediately go into bomb. So something like, well, what's the bomb button again? Is that, was that circle? Yeah, yeah, something like here. And then we're gonna put it in here. So if bomb, uh, yeah, yeah, and then we're just gonna bump out, right? Right, so going here uh, gets us into hyper. Uh, I also want to obviously then uh, remove any high circs that are happening, then we're gonna set them to nil. Uh, what else? Star well, star count, that's all good. Flash ship, we're gonna set to false. So we have this, we're gonna go hyper and then press bump in, in this, yes. Let's try this again. So, oh. There was a there was a multiple sound effects happening. What was that? Is the bomb does the bomb has a sound effect? Because there's like a multiple. I'm not sure what the problem is. Why does it have multiple sound effects? No, okay, it's okay. <clears throat> okay, something I would also maybe do here. I mean, this is maybe a little bit you know like whatever, but I want to maybe trigger the sound effect a little bit later. So something like, if 
freeze equals um, 14 then something like this right so just, just a couple of frames later um, the idea is that maybe a little bit earlier um, that I, if I double if I quickly double tap oh yeah th there is a blip in the sound effect I noticed just it, there's a blip in the sound effect so that was the double blip okay um, so yeah the problem is that if I quickly double tap I don't want to even hear that going into hyper sound effect right uh, now obviously right, if I take my sweet time then then that will happen but that doesn't matter that much. That, I, I don't care that much about this then, now let me see if oh the delay is a little bit bad uh, let me make the delay slow less Oh right, the lower we go with the freeze number, the um, the sooner the sound effect, uh, the later sound effect kicks. In. Now I wanted to show you something that is kind of like a little bit mm, that that's, that concerns me. So what is the advantage of doing this, right? Because if I have my charge fully fully up and I trigger this, then I just lose half of my charge, right? Like it doesn't seem like. It, 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 I didn't go into hyper. I didn't get all those advantages of going into hyper. So like maybe we need to like uh, sweeten the deal a little bit. And also maybe I want to like sh communicate that this is maybe a slightly different bomb, maybe a more powerful bomb. So something I would do here is I would do it bomb 70. Now we can, I think that works, right? So like the the bomb is bigger. The bomb is bigger when we when it's the non-hyper bomb, so to speak. And also, I would also, if you shoot down enemies for, uh, with this this special bomb, I would also maybe always make them uh, give you like the 4x score as if you were close by. Uh, remember, we're getting a, a bomb information when we get this, right? So here I want to say like if bomb but not hyper, then I want to give a, a mold 4. So if D, if not bomb, hmm. This only works if, if the bomb is not there, right? Else, if hi not hyper, then uh, mult equals four. So this basically gives us the four x multiplier. Four x multiplier if um, we killed all of the enemies with this special bomb, right? So let's just let's just try that. Yep, we got the 4x. And we got some cows out of it. Um, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. I'm okay getting some cows for that. Now we want to make sure that uh, it, the regular hyper, if that's I'm, hi I'm hypering out, uh, I want to make sure that I, I'm that it cancels the hyper after I trigger the bomb. So so it's uh, we know the order of things is correct because the bomb that is cancelled into like the direct bomb that uh, doesn't have the hyper on when that's what that's happening and the bomb that is going out of the hyper when that is at the end of a hyper that uh, for that the hyper sh still should be on i think so bomb and yeah here we're hitting all of the enemies with a true bomb and then we are cancelling the hyper so that makes sense but i still feel like this bomb is like okay it's bigger but it's it's hard to tell because the other one is also big, right? So this is what this is the, the direct bomb and this is the hyper bomb. It, it's very close. So maybe we want to make sure that the other bomb really looks different, right? And that may, will make that other bomb <laughs> expensive in tokens. But <laughs> you know what it is. So I I thought about this and I had this effect previously as well. There is a different way of animating the bomb, and that is instead of. Um, uh, making your bomb shrink and the shockwave going out, what you can do instead of fading to white and then making a radial iris wipe. Right? So it looks like the entire screen turned white and then uh, like a, uh, it cleared up again, right? So like a big shockwave that filled the screen and turned it white and then dissipated again. Uh, so I want to maybe do that iris effect for the direct bomb and i don't know if people will notice the difference mm, previously it wasn't that dramatically different but i'm gonna try it anyway uh by the way uh, i also want to when i do this when i change the bullets i only want to do this uh, i want to change the bullets into uh, pickups only if 
uh, if hyper is on. I don't want this direct bomb to be changing bullets into pickups. Right, so if bomb dome equals one, uh, then, and if hyper, then, then we're gonna do this, else, and. So this is the regular bomb, the, the hyper bomb, and this is the direct bomb. For this, we're gonna do a fade perk to one. So I wanna flash into white with a, with the direct bomb. And then I wanna immediately end, I want to immediately end the, the, the bomb, and then it's immediately over. And I want to make the bomb dome disappear. No, I want the radius of the bomb and the radius of the shadow. I want those to be minus one again. So it's kind of like the, the, the dome that we had previously disappears, and we just flash into white. Uh, let me see how that looks. So this basically cancels the rest of the bomb animation, and we are back to like this, right? So we didn't have the dome. We just back back to normal. And so now I want from this white, I want to wipe down. <laughs> I want to return to normal. And for this, I'm going to use an iris. We're going to set iris to zero. And we're going to start iris at minus one. So this is, let's put it in here, iris minus one. Okay, so let's include this iris effect now. So this is, this is gonna be very fairly easy and it's fun because it will actually use a new function that it was just included in pq and that is this function that you have like the reverse fill, right? We're just gonna fill everything except that little circle in the center. Uh, where are we going to do that? This is the bomb dome, this is the pickups. It's gonna be on top of everything, even on top of the ship. Enemy bullets, hyper circles, okay. Iris. If iris is greater than zero, then. So here is the, the iris is happening. We're gonna go iris plus equal one. This is wrong, but it will look funny. Then I had to look this up. This is gonna be the poke that turns on the negative fill. And then we're gonna go oval fill, bomb x, bomb y, iris, iris multiplied by perk, purse. And then seven, and then again copy this one out. This is this is how you do the the negative fill. So this will do like a negative fill, and then we have to uh, poke it back, I guess. Well, yeah, technically we could just always turn it on, right? Is there any is there any problem with that? Just like just always do this, whatever. Let's just always do this. We don't have to do it while RS is happening, right? Let's see how that works. Uh, it didn't work. Oh, right. Mm. Wee! Woo! <laughs> right. We need to do the, the different fill that we had. What's the different fill that we have? Oval 2. We have to use our own uh, oval 2. Okay, this is the wrong oval. Like this. Yes, that's what we wanted. Okay, it's too slow, so let's make it faster. Yes. It's a little bit less dramatic, I have to say. But it feels a bit snappier. It feels more like you're in the action, you know? Uh, the only thing I also want to do is like, cancel this, like make it stop. So if Iris is greater than 128, uh, then um, Iris is equal and minus one. So we're resetting it. Something we could do here as well is make sure that all of the power-ups that we have are, are sucked in, are magnetically attracted. We're gonna use the same code that we use for the bomb. This could be a function, right? This thing here. But it's just it's just eleven tokens. We're gonna do it. Whatever. Um, function suck in. Listen. This is no time for caution. And then we can do it here. And then we can also do it here. And it's great. 
Take this. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, everything got attracted. Uh, maybe a little bit late. Let's go 100. Yes! This is good, this feels good. One thing we could make this bomb maybe a bit different is maybe using a sound effect, but that's something we're gonna look at later if people are even interested in this. But yeah, we have a very different visual effect and I'm happy about that. All right, this concludes the direct bomb thing. Let me talk about changing the hyper shot. So we have a ship speed, right? Somewhere we have a ship speed. There we go, SPD equals 1.9. Uh, something I wanna maybe do, something I wanna maybe do is here an update function. Where are we actually using SPD? There's the SPD, right? So I'm thinking adding something like if um, SPD equals hyper and 1.9 or, or 1.8. And then we can remove it here, by the way. And that means I probably don't need it here, right? So basically, this means we are a little bit slower when we are we don't have the hyper. And then putting us in hyper gets us a little bit faster, just a tiny little bit faster. We could tweak this a little bit higher, maybe even. Let's let's go up to two. So we feel a little bit more nimble. And then we're back to 1.8. It's not a big difference, but it's just like a sat subtle, like, like oh, I, I feel a little bit more, more loose, you know? Uh, and, but that's not the thing that I want to talk about. The thing I really want to talk about is how uh, with the hyper, I want the options to be rotating and I want them to move them up. So it looks a little bit more like the focus fire shot. Here's the problem that I have with the current setup right now. You see how here with the big enemies, no matter how close I get, I will never make it so that four shots are hitting, three shots are even like, like a big, big tall ask. And then going to hyper doesn't really change that equation. I do love a little bit more damage, but I fundamentally, cannot you know do more damage to a single enemy <clears throat> no matter what i do and i wanted to maybe hyper to be this opportunity to give players the ability to do the deliver a lot of damage to an enemy that is uh, right in front of them so i want to bring the op options a little bit closer and then i'm going to spin them around because i have the ability to so here in opta right uh, opta is the opt op <laughs> option angle and we're going to go like if hyper then then opta will will be different uh, but also so oh man i have to now figure out all what all these values mean let me let me look it up all right so this is made opta i'm just going to copy this out oof make opt all right so so this is number and uh, okay Origin, number, animation, uh, radius x. This is the first one where things are interesting. Radius x and radius y. <clears throat> then the angle and the y offset. Right, so we're gonna do something like this. Um, so I wanna be addressing the, um, the y offset and I wanna be addressing maybe the angle uh, uh, or the, yeah, the angle, uh, the distance at which they're, they're rotating. So first, let's maybe do the, the Y offset. So we're gonna go hyper and or, well, actually, instead of doing like multiple if statements, how about we just do all of these in local variables? So it's like local opt Y equals minus two, and then opt uh, R, we're gonna, put it at minus 11, right? And then opt R, we're gonna put in here and here. And then opt Y, we're gonna put it here. And then when we go into hyper, <clears throat> these things will be different values. Uh, let me see, what did I have last time? I had minus eight on the Y. And let's keep the radius as it is. I wanna see what, how that looks like. So going to hyper, and now they're way in front of me. Okay, yeah, that's that's not cool. I definitely want to rotate them, so we're gonna go opta equals time. Let's let's, let's see how that looks. I I like this. This this feels good. 
but I want them to maybe uh, bring them a little bit closer. So let's go. Um, I had eight last time around. Let's uh, no. I, the radius was nine last time around. Let's try nine. Yeah. So we, so see now we can do a lot more damage. It's a little more more erratic, but those shots do uh, can do a lot more damage to a single enemy. Okay, I I have to resist the urge not to animate those. Like when they go into hyper mode, it would be nice maybe to have an enemy because they kind of like snap in and it, that kind of looks a little bit like, uh, I don't know. The problem here is that these are like, you know, three values that we need to animate and it just, just takes such an amount of tokens and it's such a little detail, I don't know. I'm going to put it on a, on a nice to have list. We, you have to open up a nice to have list. Nice to have. Animate option transition. Okay, uh, maybe also something I would do is with the shots. Yeah, here where we're shooting. Uh, I would maybe, when we're in hyper, I would maybe uh, reduce the, the spread a little bit. So oh, where is the spread? Where, how are we doing the spread? Here's the spread, right? Hyper and... Um, <laughs> Oh, a spurred equals 1.1 hyper and 1.1 or 1.05, like very subtle. Let's try that. What, what happens if it's just one? Oh no, I, I, oh right, it's one. It should be less than one then. Wait. Oh, it's 1.1. Okay, got it. Um, so uh, it should be 1.1 for the spread and like 0 0.5 for the hyper. Yeah, see now, now it's a lot more straighter. Uh, let's go, let's find a maybe, maybe so. I want it to be a little bit of a spread there. So I think maybe this would be good. The only thing I don't like about this is that the center shots have a little bit of a spread. So I want to remove that. Um, so we had like this here, right? A 0 0.2. Let's do this again. This time 0 0.2 for not. Or let's do it like this. Hyper end zero or so we don't need that so it's a straight shot um when you are yeah still have a little bit of spread there so if i want to uh, you know kick back I, I can still hit maybe a lot of people and i'm moving faster so it's easier for me to get you know to, to, to places a little bit easier to get to places but also, I, I have this ability to, to just like do a lot of damage in front of a single enemy. And I think this kind of like changes up a little bit the strategic options that you have. Like Hyper has now a reason other than just do a lot of damage and make a lot of points. And also it might be difficult to actually hit a lot of enemies around you. And that's maybe also good if you can't hit a lot of like little enemies because maybe that then you will get attacked a lot and then there's a little bullet on the screen and you can hyper up. There's, there's options. Let's see how this works. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. All right, so this uh, clears this up. So we have changed the hyper shot a little bit. Now let us talk about the HUD glow up. I did some work. Let me show you my work. I did some work in Asprite. I kind of like figured out we want to have something like this. So um, I want to, I, I, I caved in. We need to have outlines on the on the text. I think just like the drop shadow is not as legible as just having that like a proper outline. Uh, but uh, we're gonna make the out outline brighter. Um, so it's like using the favorite color, the 13 color for that. So it's a little bit more um, more colorful, more cartoony, and it fits very well with this font that we chose that has like always like this huge chin because there we can maybe even render in like a, a shadow. So we get like these very nice, 
tangible uh, letters, very puffy letters. That's really fun. Uh, also, I, ha I had a change of mind about how to do the tally. At the end, end of hyper, I want to do like a kind of like, a, like a tally, right? So basically, bring in like a line, and then count the number of stars you collected, and actually display how much score you got from that hyper. Just like little little uh, info, kind of like a receipt for your hyper, so to speak. But that only um, appears at the end when the when the, when the when the letters are blinking when the hyper is over, and this is the redesigned bar for uh, for the hyper charge. It would look look a little bit plain, so I made it a little bit chunkier, a little bit cartoonier, and and bigger as well, so it kind of like draws more attention. I'm gonna try to do this stripe on on the, on on top of there. We're gonna try to make this animated stripe to kind of draw a little bit more attention, to have some movement in the corner, to to make it a bit clear. Uh, when that when charge is happening something I don't quite like still is that this charge bar has a different Design than the letters like this has the drop shadow and this has the outline ah, but whatever all right Let's do the HUD glow up and for in order to do the glow up something we have to do sadly is we have to Because I mean we could maybe do it not do it, but I, I, I think it, it's necessary we could pull this off, you know, using math and so forth, but that will take a lot of tokens. And I think just making it a tiny little sprite for that little texture on the on the thing helps, goes a long way. So yeah, I want to add something like this. And in fact, I'm going to move it to the side. Oh wait, does it fit in here? <gasps> it fits in here. I'm going to put it in here. Then. And then we can, oops. I'm going to use, I'm going to, I know it's a bit silly, but I'm going to actually, draw something else in here and it will make sense in a second okay so these are uh, some additions let's move on to the sprite editor and while we're in the sprite editor i also wanted to address another issue that we already have uh, i want to fish fix i want to create muzzle flashes for the options and I, i'm going to do something smart i'm going to actually reuse all the existing muzzle flashes and use our sprite editor to make them work all right so let me do this muzzle flashes first perhaps so i'm going to just copy those muzzle flashes let me do that real quick all right so these are basically the same uh, sprites as we had with the muzzle flashes but we're gonna change some things first of all the problem with the muzzle flashes for the options is that there are even number of pixels we want to make them uneven we're going to use this new function that we have of making a, an uneven mirror effect like this and that will get us a long way to to make them look a little bit nicer but also like it's options they should have, the muzzle flashes should be sh smaller than from the real ship right um so i'm gonna actually just like lower the width and then just gonna like remove one pixel from the width and then set them in the center. Like why, why, why go all the way out and, and you know, create like special effects and everything when you can just like, when you can just have it on everything on a cheap. All right, so this is the, this will be the effect, the muzzle effect for the, uh, for the options and now I'm gonna create a new thing is gonna be gonna call this charge charge bar and I'm gonna copy this one out and I'm gonna do this is this is stupid but charge side this is a little bit stupid but it's it's better than doing it with hand it's one of those things I will explain in a second what that is. Let's export this and let's do an animation. Right, so for the flash animation, 72, 73, 74, 75. And that's gonna be the, the uh, muzzle flash uh, for the options, right? And then I'm gonna export this. This is gonna be an animation number 19. All right, so now in shots, Oh no, I mean shoot. Inside the shoot function, we then, oh, no, that we went too far. We went too far. There we go. Um, this, these are the muzzle flashes. Um, and instead of the muzzle flash two, I want to use the muzzle flash 19. And looks so much nicer. It looks so much nicer because now the main shots from our ship are dominant. Previously, they were kind of like a little bit uh, overwhelmed by the by the muzzle flashes, but now they're like really 
big and then, oh yes, this looks so sick. So that basically clears up the muzzle flash for options. Now let us continue with a HUD glow up. Uh, for the HUD glow up, I think we're gonna use the dear X and dear Y because we have to use, uh, we have to use a new function, text drawing function. I am, I am ashamed that we're going there, but I think I did some tests for how much uh, processing power it takes and it's like one percent or so it's it's not that much so i think it's 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 pays off and it's so much more legible and it looks more cartoony which i want to go for anyway all right so here's we have ship print i'm not sure sure what we're going to use the ship if maybe that will something that's something that can disappear i'm going to mark it with a star um but i want to do now here the ot print the outline print um and this will have a c C2 and a C3. And we're going to see what that means in a, in a second. Um, so with outline print, you know, it's, it's the same thing. We, we're looping, we're going to loop for i equals one to four do. And we're going to loop this four times. And we're going to reuse actually these things here for our, our we, we could copy this four times, but I think it's going to be more efficient if we do it like this. Um, so it's like plus dear x i y i and then plus dear x i right so that will draw the text four times around the actual text that we're drawing and then we're going to draw the text and but the color is here is going to be c2 so we can specify what what outline color we're using uh, and then we're going to do the shadow right um, so if c3 is specified uh, if C3, then, because we might not set it, but if we set it to nil, then we're not, we're not doing it. But if we do it, then we're gonna do a clip, zero, Y, and I figured out plus five was a good number. So that's exactly, you know, that bottom line of our text, 128, one. That's gonna be a clipping like rectangle and we're gonna turn off the clip afterwards. And we're just gonna print the text again, this time with a C3. Everybody got that? We're speed running this. Um, yeah, so this is gonna be the outline print. And now the idea is that we're gonna replace our or of our prints, or at least the big prints with the outline print. All right, so here's for example, the score. Instead of sure print, we're gonna use OT print. And we're gonna specify that we want to have the shadow 13 and uh, the outline 13 and shadow color six. Let's see if this even works. Yep, uh, there it is. Uh, for some reason, go, it doesn't go down. Why it doesn't go down? Oh, because we're starting at one. Okay, good. Uh, we're starting at zero, zero. So the loop has to be different. Here, we have to go from two to five. Yeah, now it looks correct. So I'm gonna immediately also replace the outline print of the star value as well here. And that is gonna be, the fill is gonna be 10. The outline, we want to set it to brown, so four. And the shadow is gonna be orange, so nine. And yeah, that looks a lot more in line with the star next to it. And yeah, this, this looks sick. So good. Okay, and then we're gonna use those outline prints as well for for the little text, actually. For the, for example, for the score history, for example, here, we're using print right now. We're gonna use outline print 713. And there it is. So it's like the, the history is a lot more readable now. It's kind of like really nice. Uh, and then the star count is also something that is going to get the OT pr uh, print treatment, so 13. Now, part of this glow up is this idea that we're going to uh, actually also track how much score we received from Hyper. So not just, um, not just star count, but also star, let's call it Hyper Tally. So just how much we got throughout this entire uh, this entire hyper, and we're gonna uh, when the hyper begins, we're gonna set it to zero, and then every time you kill an enemy here, when you hit the enemy, and here's where we're getting the score score. Uh, we're gonna go if hyper <clears throat> if hyper is on, we're gonna go with hyper tally plus equal. 
uh, SCR. But not here. Actually, it's not here. Not when, when we're killing the enemy, where we're picking up the pickup. That's important. So new picks. Yeah, yeah. So here's where we're getting it. High vitality plus equals star value. That's right. That's where we're counting the stars, and that's how we're getting where you're getting the tally. Okay. And then when we're drawing stuff, so this is where we're drawing the star count. Now I want to all now just only uh, draw the star count when Linger is greater than zero and um, high, not hyper. So the idea is that uh, I only want to show the tally at the end where we finish with everything. Now immediately you see that it's kind of like awkward that we have, you see how we have, we have to use the same, ah, uh, right justifying text is a little bit awkward. And we cannot print them in one print statement because we have the star here, it's, ah oh, man. Uh, but yeah, let's do the two string. Um, Hyper tally. Let's do a 27 here, and then we have to put it further down. So this is currently at height 28. Um, so we're gonna go 34. Let's see how that works. So I'm I'm hypering, and now we get the tally at the end. Maybe we're gonna go six. Is that better? Yeah, the six is better. But now I wanted to like to communicate that this is a tally. This is kind of like a receipt that you got. I want to draw a line. Um, so we're gonna go then line 128. I, I got the values in here so, because figuring out these values for layouts these 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 are very frustrating. So I'm just gonna draw this line here. All right, so how, how many pixels down? One, two, three pixels down, I think. Everything needs to go three pixels down. So it's like 31 and 39. Like this, perfect. Maybe the line could be a little bit longer and maybe we could put a drop shadow on that line, but it's it doesn't really matter. One of the reasons, maybe there's something I wanted to, <clears throat> to explain, one of the driving motivations in doing the redesign of all of this, was that I also wanted to make sure that the text is readable uh, or like the older UI is readable when the background is completely white. Because quite often we're flashing things to white. Quite often we have white elements and I have a, maybe an idea later when we might go through clouds, right? Like that, that's the original idea that I had. So just to prepare ourselves for that eventuality, I want to make sure that Tech, the UI is always readable uh, when it's on a white background. Okay, um, by the way, something that we haven't updated, uh, but we should, is we also want to draw our lives with also with this new up out uh, OT print. Right, so in the bottom left corner now, our lives also have this beautiful treatment. Oh, so good. Feels good. Now let us move our attention to the charge bar. That is something that I don't like. We haven't, uh, this is not great. Let's redo this entire charge bar. In fact, I'm gonna be so bold, I'm just gonna delete everything. I'm just gonna delete all of these things. And then this is, I'm gonna comment this out. So we're gonna do a rect. I'm gonna start with a rectangle. And again, I'm gonna go off the numbers I figured out. Uh, 46, 6, 7. So this is gonna be a little rectangle that we want to draw. This looks like this, okay. Uh, in our design, there was a drop shadow underneath. So this, this hurts, this hurts me. 3, 7, 45, 7. Because it's so much, so much code just for this little drop shadow there, but okay. I mean, we could turn it into a sprite if we later realize that we have the sprite sheet space. Uh, but uh, I do, did use specifically those little, those little tiny little sprites at the sides to kind of like recreate this. I mean, we have, haven't recreated the entire bar, but at least those little edges on the side, so it's nice and rounded. I actually used uh, the sprite for it. And we said this is uh, 77. Now I'm not sure where to print, print them. Let's go 3, 2. 
yes, uh, it needs to be 2-2. Two, two. Yes, this needs to be 3-2-3. Three, three. Yes, okay. So on this one side, and then we're gonna put this on the other side as well. So it should be 46, right? All right, here's a little bar. Here's the little bar. So now we need to fill that bar with beautiful information. I actually, wait a minute. I also want to maybe put one in the center as well, right? So something like this. Yeah, so we have like the midway point. In fact, I don't know. Let, let's see if this works. It's 15, it's how many tokens? 15 tokens? 15 tokens. Can we, can we do like a smart loop here? For I in all, does that help? Because it's just always, it's just one number changes, the X position changes. So like go 46, 26, do, is that, does that help? No, it's exactly the same. <laughs> oh, well, it's the same thing, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm over it. It's um, the positioning of the center. Uh, the center sprite we're going to figure out later. All right, so this, so far, so good. Now, <laughs> we want to draw the percentage bar. Um, we're going to use the clipping rectangle for this. So we're gonna clip uh, at position four, three, um, the, I think 40 and three, something like this. This is gonna be the clip and I'm gonna release the clip again. And I'm gonna do a rect fill, just like a test rect fill, zero, zero, 128, 128, eight. All right, almost correct, almost correct. It should be 41. And that makes sense because I want to have maybe have a perfect, like the, the center of the bar, I want there to be like a perfect place for the center bar to go. And if we had an even number um, of width for the center bar, uh, for the entire charge bar, then they, the you know, the center divot that would be always a little bit off pixel either to the left or right. And so, you know, little details like this. Uh, but yeah, so this is our little charge bar. And we can immediately, we can immediately make it even so that it uh, responds to our, the, the percentage number that we have. So charge max, right? I, I deleted all the text before, so I have to re recreate it. So it's like charge max, so charge, divided by charge max multiplied by 41, like this. So it's already responding to our demands. You see, the, the, it's, all, it's already working. Now we want to maybe make it so that the middle point is exactly where we want it. So that's gonna set the charge to 200. At this point, we need to we would have um, be able to bomb. So let's put the divot in the center to the to that position. So it's like 23. 20, yeah, that's 23, okay, that's good. Mm, but, but it looks off center. Mm, I don't like that, I don't like that. Can we, can we change this? Can we change this? Is it possible still? 40, 44, 44. 45. Yeah, yeah, this, oh man, it's, it's math. I hate math. Yeah, this looks correct now, right? So now I want to have like this scrolling texture and I don't know if it's necessary. I don't know if it's necessary, but if it's wrong, then I want to, I don't want to be right. Okay, so in, now instead of the rect fill, instead of just filling it with a, with a blank color, something what I want to do is like four, I equals zero to six do. And I'm gonna go go MSPR, um, and that is the texture is 72, and we're gonna draw it in the position three. For now, let's go three uh, plus i times four, uh, and the y position is gonna be three, I think. Let's let's see how that looks. I don't know what happened here. Oh yeah, it's 76. Yeah, like this. Oh, not what I wanted. Um, <clears throat> I think the width is not, is, is, is it six? Yeah, it's six, good. So now we see our beautiful, beautiful percentage bar. I'm gonna use it. 
but it kind of looks odd. It kind of looks odd if it's not moving, right? It looks a little bit weird. So I want to anim animate this in addition. Uh, I'm just going to use I. Oh no, I'm going to use just J for this. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting a little bit lazy. Ah, <laughs> lazy devs. Let's go T divided by divided by two modulo six, right? Something like this, and then we're gonna add this to our little equation here. So it's scrolling a little bit. Let's see if this works. It's scrolling. It's scrolling. Um, I want to go minus one. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so now comes <laughs> the little details. Um, so first of all, for example, I want maybe the scrolling to be faster uh, when the and go in the other direction when the hyper is on, right? That makes sense to me, right? If, if the hyper is on, then it's going to be like whoo, very fast, right? So local s um, sp equals hyper and Two or four. Let's 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 try that, and then we're gonna put the SP in here. So it's moving slow now, and I think this is a good indicator. This is good speed for. Okay, this is this is re ready to go, and then if it's if it's okay, <laughs> let's make it let's make it one. Let's make the hyper really fast. Yeah, now it's really going. Uh, but of course, I want to have minus one, right? Because I want to go in the other direction. Does that work? Yes. <laughs> Oh, this looks so cool. <laughs> we're depleting, we're depleting the chart. Uh, uh, let's 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 actually do this a little bit different. So we're gonna go if hyper, then and so if uh, for that because I there's different states I want to communicate with that. So if, S, if sp is we're gonna set it to four. If hyper then sp equals minus one, uh, and the four we're gonna go say four um, has bomb and eight or four. So it's it's slow. Oh no, it, the other way around. It's slow when we have the bomb, and it's faster if we. So the basic the idea is that if we are depleted our charge then it's moving very slowly because right now it's like the, the machine is not working right and then once we get once we get it all charged up then it goes a little bit faster but i think it was still not fast enough um let's go three or two let's go two what about two yeah two two feels better So yeah, we're we're sluggish. We're sluggish. We're charging up, and then we, we get faster. Yeah, that seems good. I also wanted to. I mean, it's those little details, but I think this pays off. When the charge gets below eighty, I want to color that bar red because that bar again. I want to communicate. Have different ways of communicating the same idea. So no matter where you're looking, you get like information about what what's currently happening. And I was thinking maybe even let's let's do something like this. We're gonna go local danger flash equals false, right? And then if charge is smaller than forty, then danger flash equals this. And then I'm gonna go if danger flash then something like this. So we have like a variable that 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 we use can use to control the frequency of the danger flash. Something like this. Maybe something like this. And the idea is that we're going to use this danger flash um, to, to color also the bar. So the bar will flash the same way that the ship is actually flashing. So we're going to go here if hyper equals uh, sp1 is, is this. And then if danger flash, then uh, we're going to change uh, 6 into 8. And we're going to change 7 into, let's go 14. And then after we drew everything, this is where we draw the, the stripe. Then we turn off the PAL. 
So we have this beautiful bar charging, we're gonna use it. it the, the hyper gets depleted, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. And then, oh, danger, it's blinking, it's blinking, it's blinking. Haha, <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, yeah, this makes sense. Um, there's one aspect that I also wanted to add, and that is this flashing thing that flashes that we are ready to do the hyper. I think I want to add that on top, because just like the scrolling thing, it might be, you know, it's just like a addition. But I also want to like spell out that, yes, you can do the hyper now. The hyper is ready, or the bomb, right? So um, let me do this real quick. Correct fill. I have the positioning figured out, 3.9. Point twenty six, point fifteen, point seven, like this, right? Three nine twenty six fifteen seven. Okay, and I'm gonna do this again here. Two ten twenty seven fourteen seven. Right, so this should get us a, <clears throat> a little this white bar, and we're using two rect fills to get like to get the bar around it, to get the corners a little bit around it. I want the corners to be a little bit around it, so it looks a little bit like a little bit cartoony. And then in here we can print the ready. Uh, the positioning is not correct. Four ten. I think it's uh, now the ready is is too extreme. I want the blinking of the ready to be a little bit less extreme. So let's do something like um, T modulo sixteen is smaller than eight, and thirteen or six, something like this. So we have like blinking, but it's not like oh my gosh, it's it's you know it's just like hey, it's happening. It's like a neon sign, you know. Drawing your attention, but without necessarily, you know, putting you on edge. Ah, ah. <laughs> this is so fun. It's so clear what's happening. It looks so nice and polished. Oh, right. So that finishes the HUD glow up. Uh, now, audio ducking is something that I wanted to add for a long time. Now, I think we fixed actually the problem with the hyper mode because the sound effect is triggering at a different position. Uh, previously, the sound effect was triggering the update function. And then immediately afterwards, next frames, it would be doing the freeze frame stuff. But in that frame, when you trigger the hyper mode, uh, afterwards in the update function, you would do collision detection, and then you could maybe hit an enemy, and the hit effect, hit sound effect, would override the big sound effect of going into hyper. Um, because we only have four channels. If there's old channels are playing something, then some sound effects might not play. Um, but now our sound effects are actually being uh, played in the um, update function of the freeze ring. So there is no other sound effects that play out during that time, so you kind of like are off the hook. Um, but I still wanted to maybe add this. Uh, we are, we have some tokens to go, and I don't think it's that. Um, it's, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't, we, we spend the tokens on way more frivolous things today. So let's, let's add something that, that is kind of like actually some good engineering, I guess. I mean, technically it's kind of like a very global thing, right? So let, let's do something like in here, let's call it duck um, equals zero. Uh, if you don't know the term from audio, a ducking means that if you have, let's say you have um, a music playing and then somebody's talking over the music. Ducking means making the music go l l softer while somebody's speaking so you can hear their speaking more clearly. Ducking is kind of like this duck, not the quack, not the quack quack kind of duck, okay? Uh, and so something I want to do now is I want to have this variable that basically tells our little sound effects, our not important sound effects, to kind of like chill it down when an important sound effect is playing. So for example here, the explosion here, right? So I want to have duck equals t plus um, for the explosion, I think we said it was uh, around 30 frames. Uh, so this is basically will mark a point in the future at which point it is okay again to do small sound effects. Um, so this is for explosions. For bomb, uh, immediately after we do the bomb, we um, we go on freeze frame and there's not going to be any other sound effects going there. So I'm just going to go plus one just, just for the next frame. Just don't, don't do anything. But uh, Technically, you know, the next frame will freeze for a couple of frames and that will give us plenty of time to uh, 
to let this sound effect play out. So that's okay. And then I guess here we really don't need that in the in the hyper on. We don't need that because we're playing it here. So that's okay. But we might use it somewhere else. We don't know. Now the sound effects that I want to duck are definitely the things that are uh, you know like the shooting sh sound. So here we're gonna go if t oops if um, duck uh, if t is greater than duck then only then you play the actual sound effect of the shooting of the actual shooting of the sound because it's not doesn't matter if sometimes an explosion is playing and you don't really hear the sound you don't hear them anyway right there is the sound of, the explosion should overwhelm the shooting sound and that's definitely also the case with hitting the enemies So here, if has hit and um, t uh, is greater than duck, uh, maybe picking up the sounds, uh, picking up the sound uh, pickups as well. So let's just do that. There we go. Right. So we only do these things when there's no important sound effect. Yeah. Sounds good to me. By the way, stuff like losing hyper, we also might duck at some point, but it's okay for now. It's okay, I'm, I'm good with that. All right, and that covers audio ducking. I'm gonna take a small break and then we're gonna return to uh, glow up the menu a little bit. We're gonna add a high score and so forth. Be right back. Mm, I have returned a little bit of a break. I have some tea, let's continue. Also, I've been thinking, I've been testing a little bit the current situation. I don't like ducking away the pick up sounds. I think that was a mistake. It feels odd where so when sometimes you don't hear the pick up sounds. I want to, I want, I want bring the pick up sounds always back. The only thing that's really ducking away is the shooting sound and the hit sounds when you hit the enemies. Also, before we continue to um, the menu stuff, because we have to do the menu as well, I want to also do a little bit of a tweak on uh, the uh, the pickups actually, we're already here. So what I want to do is I want to nerf. I want to nerf how much charge stars give, the star pickups give, uh, when you are not in hyper, right? The problem there is that if you know if you do, are in hyper mode and picking up the stars, then they should replenish your charge meter, obviously. But when you do like the big explosion at the end and all the stars are flying into you and everything, then uh, it, it, they are a little bit much. Like you get a lot of stars for that. And those could potentially just completely replenish your bar very easily. So I want to nerf them a little bit. So they still give you charge, obviously, but not as much charge, right? Um, so that's what I want to do here. I'm not sure how best to go about this. Maybe something like this is going to be going in here and then we'll go local, uh, get charge or get tr. And it's going to be tr pick. And then here we're going to go get tr uh, divided equals two. So it's kind of like we're gonna do a little bit of a bit of a you get a slightly less charge for that, uh, or slightly it's, you get half the charge for those stars at the end, and but you're gonna get probably a lot of stars because it's very easy to create a lot of stars when you when you do the bomb inside like huge uh, huge field of of bullets and then it's gonna be very easy to just just like completely replenish your thing. So I want to do a bit of a nerf here. Alright, so this is now the gameplay done and I want to now do the menu stuff and so forth. So for example, when we are drawing, when we are drawing the game over, I want this to be the outline print, obviously outline print 713. Um, this is also going to be outline print, just like to be consistent, right? That makes sense to me. Let's see how this looks. Mm, weird. Oh. Oh, by the way, since we're using, it's not just 713, we are using, we have that line, right? So let's do that line as well. 713.6, okay. So let's see, uh, that's the score. 
7136, like this. Okay, let's try this. Doesn't look as great, I have to say. Uh, it's not my favorite screen, uh, but uh, probably this screen will get an overhaul. I don't want to just like end in this kind of star, you know, dark thing. We're gonna we're gonna think about this later on. I will move it down a little bit though. Uh, I think that's that looks better. If we have a space there. Yeah, way better. Um, but um, I wanted to also add something else. So for example, um, what I want to do is I want to I want to do this thing. So we can you have to re release the buttons. You, you you cannot you cannot just completely immediately go. You have to release the buttons. So it's like released equals false, and then an update function. Oh, we're gonna do this in both an update menu and update go over. We're gonna go if. Uh, we're gonna go if released and oh no no we're gonna do it like this if released then and only then we're checking if the buttons are pressed right and the same thing here right uh, and then else if not released equals not um this and this right like this and same here all right so let me see let me i want to i want to die it didn't work Oh, right, 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 because we're probably like re-triggering. When you keep it up button pressed, oh, like this. Let's try this again. No. It didn't work. Uh, I think it might be not BT and, and not. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think. <laughs> binary there's probably also a more efficient way of doing this by doing some uh, bit shifting and stuff like that but what the heck okay uh, I am thoroughly confused by this let's try this this is the menu we're gonna go debug least Okay, I have released now, obviously, if that makes sense. Okay. Hmm. Seems to be always true. Oh, I know why. I think the problem is that we are not setting released. Like, we, when we go game over, yeah, 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 here, when we go game over, uh, we need to go released equals false. Uh, because it released sets, is set to true when we are in the, um, in the main menu. And then it never gets reset to false. So that was the problem. It's one of those things. Ah. And then also here, when you go back to the menu, I also want to set to release to false. Right. Right. So now I have to release and then I have to repress. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So letting go of the buttons is already implemented. I do not have a better way to center text right now. Um, the Squid Light actually suggested something that was interesting to me. Um, you print the print function actually returns the the position of the cursor after printing or something. Like that. So you can use this to calculate the number of pixels that have been printed using a print function. Uh, but you have to print the text to the screen for that. But Squid Light suggested that we could use that to print the text off screen and then get the number from the print statement to calculate the length of the text and use that to, to maybe center text or right, right align it. I think that's a good idea. The problem is I, I just can't figure out a good way to make this function slot with the tools we already have. Because we have like, we have the sh print and we have the OT print, right? We have all, all these different prints and I, and they're already printing like you know normal print but then how do you left, right and left align like i don't know it's yeah because that the function that i'm thinking about it should do the out, do outline print and it should do the big fonts and the small fonts as well like uh, i don't know how would i even do this would i would i add another parameter to this 
I'm not exactly sure. I will put this into a, a nice to have, better th way to center text. Right now it's working, right? So it's I don't really need to have it. Like if this worked, it would, would maybe save us some tokens. Who knows? Who knows? What I'm way more interested in is actually implementing the high score so you can get a high score. And also another thing I also want to maybe add, I'm going to add this to, the, to here. Uh, I want to also have checkpoint menu. This will be become very important later on when I um, uh, when when I do the level design, I always want to jump into different parts in the level. So let's 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 do that. But first, let's do the uh, the high score. So right after we include, we do card data, and then we call this couch map. It's not going to be the name of the game. I swear, this is not going to be called couch map. We have to figure out a different name. By the way, if you have good ideas for a name, write down in doobly doo. And then we're going to go high score equals d get zero we're gonna grab the high score and it's gonna be zero at the beginning right and also i want to maybe have a way of clearing the high score so i'm gonna immediately go menu item uh one we're gonna call it clear high score and then we're gonna do like this inline function to do this so we're gonna go high score equals zero d set Zero, zero. So we're writing the position zero, writing zero. Okay. So this will clear the high score. Now what I want to do is I want to draw the high score to the screen. So we basically need to copy this function here, right? So we're basically going to copy this stuff and we're going to do that in the menu. So we're going to draw the map. We're going to draw score, high score. We're going to poke this. Then we're going to, uh, we're going to write the name of the game. Maybe we're going to call it not couch map. <laughs> so we clear that it's not couch map, all right? Uh, and then uh, we're going to convert high score to uh, score, and then we're going to draw that to the screen. Yeah, that's, that's good. Let's see. Um, all right, govert is something that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we need don't need to do this we need to, we can just like hard code it that's fine oops uh, i accidentally pressed okay this is good let's put it a little bit further to the right a little bit too much to the right uh let's go with 33 yeah that seems good did i did i score did i did i high score this is one of those things when it when suddenly it looks wrong it looks wrong what I wrote there. Like the score, the, the word score suddenly looks wrong to me. I don't know why. You know how did sometimes you just look at a word and it looks wrong to you, but it's actually correct. I have one of those uh, situations for me. I have a fly flying around here. How annoying. All right. Uh, yeah, that seems good, right? So we have the high score thing. Now we obviously need to actually save the high score when the game is over. And I want to do this actually in the in the die. So here uh, we're gonna do if score is greater than high score then and then we're gonna go high, high score equals score and then d set uh, zero score. Right we're writing the the score into the it's d set, d set right d set yeah. Actually, I want to do this. Okay, so let me let me check this. Out. So we're gonna go over the game over. I'm gonna call it go over. We're gonna create a function called go over, and then um, we're gonna go go over game over, and then go over. Uh, yeah, and then we're gonna get all this stuff out of, out of here. We can we can save a token here. <laughs> And then we're gonna uh, create a tool for this. And it should, shouldn't be a tool, actually. It's, maybe it should be more, more of a gameplay. I'm not sure what it is. We're gonna go 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 over txt. So we're gonna create a dedicated function to go game over because there's two situations where we go game over, and there's a lot of things that happen when that happens. So let's let's just do a, a unified solution for this. <clears throat> And then we, because we have to also do this when we finish a level, right? We have, we have this here, right? So let's go, go, go over, finished. 
and then we don't need this anymore and no, don't need this anymore. And that will make sure that when we finish a level, we are also automatically checking for a high score. Let's check this, if this works. So first I want to go game over. <coughs> Okay, <laughs> I have score zero. Uh, okay, let let let's let's get a score. I have score two hundred now, and that is now also our high score. And then if I restart, the high score is there. That's good. Now let me let me try to oh, let me let me reset the lives to two. I set the life to one to zero when I was I was playtesting uh, just 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 now. All right, ninety five thousand. All right, so that's 95,000. We are, we're in the finished screen and now we go back to, to high score. That's fantastic. We're gonna do a beauty pass on those in this, uh, eventually, but it's just like, I want to get the basic functionality in here. Uh, last thing I want to add, because I think it's kind of neat, um, is I want to have a, um, a little thing that, that tells us if a high score is a high score. Uh, and uh, let's, let's so let's do that real quick. So I'm thinking it's going to be here, and we're going to go if high score equals score, then right. And in this case, we want to maybe um, yeah okay. Let's reset it down to lives equals zero. Uh, let's let's for for now let's make it always true because I I'm not sure where exactly to print this. Oh, actually, no, we're going to do it like this. If score equals high score, score then else like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, write this. And then we can go high score and then we can make it even blink. So we're going to go T modulo uh, 16 smaller than eight and seven or six, right? So we, there's gonna be a little bit of a blinking thing. Okay, let's see, uh, the layout's probably not great. All right, it's not happening right now because uh, because we haven't received the high score, but I'm just gonna, just for debugging purposes, I'm gonna make it so that we always get the high score or that it always gets the high score indicator. So that's good. Let's move a little bit to the left. This is very bad. This is super difficult to uh, lay out the screen like this. It's just, yeah, that's good. Maybe 45 after all. Let's make it a little bit faster. I think the it, we can go faster. Let's go 10, five. Yeah. Sick. So if score is equals high score. Okay, so let's now the question is we can we get more than 95,000 in this little sequence here? Okay, let's try it one more time Okay, I think we got a little bit more. Yeah, we got high score, yay! Okay, and the high score is saved. So that's great, we have the high score figured out. And then uh, the last thing that is on my, on my list, the last thing, high score figured out, I want to add that checkpoint menu. I have a little bit of a code here, I'm gonna copy this out. So we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna create a rectangle, rect fill, uh, 38, uh, 87, 96, 88, plus uh, a main menu, main menu. We're gonna have a main menu uh, variable. We're gonna fill that, uh, sort that in a second. Oh yeah, when it, but then you have to multiply it by seven and then comma. So we're gonna have an array with, with the entries in the, in the main menu. And then we're gonna go for i, equals one to hashtag main menu. So we're gonna loop through all of them. 
and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna calculate the y position for the in a given element like this. So we're gonna go i and we're gonna multiply it by seven and we're gonna add 82 to this. Again, these numbers are something that you know you restart it over and over again until it looks right, right? So it's this is not nothing magical. It's just laborsome to to do this again, this once again. Okay, and then um, so this is this M N U Y. This is kind of like what is currently selected, basically the cursor, right? Um, let, let's go, go call M N U cur. Let's call this menu cursor. And if that's the case, then we're just going to fill uh, everything with white. So um, something like this. Uh, I could use the um, print function to draw like an inverted fill, but I feel like it's quite often it's not doing like a proper outline for this. And then so now we can just draw the thing for the main menu. So this actually we're printing the individual entries in the menu. So we're going to print i dot um, hmm. We're going to this is going to be an array of arrays, so you're going to see in a second. 40 i y in the color now. So if i is equal m n u cur and zero or seven like this. Okay, so now let's let's get the m n u cur in here. Uh, we're gonna do this like here. So m n u cur. Uh, that's the cursor of the menu. We're going to set it to, to 1. And now the main menu is the important thing, right? So main menu equals. And then here we're going to say like uh, start cliff chunkers, something like this, right? Um, but in addition to that, we also want to save where we're starting, right? So um, this is going to be an array of arrays, as I said. So it's lit 2d so it's going to be start comma zero cliff comma we're going to set it to zero for now we're going to figure out the correct value in a second chunkers Comma zero. The chunkers are the big enemies that we are fighting at the end. I want to maybe to like immediately start there if you wanna you wanna test something, right? Uh, okay, so let's see if this works. Totally works. Absolutely works. That's exactly what I want, right? It just like shows me a menu of stuff. Excellent. Okay, so let's see when we're starting right here. Uh, Four twenty was the chunkers, and two twenty was cliff, I think. Chunkers at 420, let's go. And cliff at 220. Okay, like this, right? Right. Um, now let us implement the navigation in menu, right? Okay, the menu works, right? But uh, we want to be we want to be moving around in the menu. So if BTNP uh, do we have oh yeah, right, it's it's U. Oh no, 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 what? Up, oh, no, up. Then else if btnp down. And then we're gonna go menu cur. I'm gonna move it up. Minus equal one. And then plus equal one. And then we're gonna clamp it. Menu cur equals mid one menu cur hashtag name menu. All right, so now we can move this, We're moving up and down, perfect. And now I want to make it so that if we uh, start the game, we're actually starting the game at a certain position. Uh, let's do it like with, with something like this. So let's go like S, 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 C, R. That's it's just S, S, C, R. And then we're gonna go scroll equals, um, SSCR and SSCR or zero. Let's go SSCR and Z or zero. Um, so if we don't set anything, we, we will just start the game. But if we set something, we're going to start at that position. And then this allows us to just start the game like this. Start game. Then we're going to grab the main menu, main menu uh, two, 
and it's going to be menu menu cur, right? We're going to grab the menu um, item on the position of the cursor, and we're going to get the second entry, which it has to start. So this is going to be set as at the start. It does. And this this should set us as the cliff. It does. Ah, so satisfying and ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and what can I say? That's it. That is it. All right. So let us now move over to the other editors and let's implement the current my SPR function into all those other editors. I'm SPR. We're using this function a lot. There we go, that's the function, right? Um, and the, the problem is that this mirroring, this is new. This is new, so we want to kind of copy this out. So let's get this mirroring out here. Wait, is it? Is this the, the mirroring? Yeah, because we use the fx minus two trick here. That's good. Yeah, let's get this out. Let's copy this, uh, saving this. Um, so we're gonna go, we're gonna do this in any edit. Any edit is actually already implemented. Brain edit, it's not implemented. Like this. Let's make sure this works with everybody. Yeah, seems good. Uh, and edit. Boop. Making sure this works. I mean, it doesn't crash. Pat edit. Making sure it doesn't crash. Seems good. We can spawn things. Peachy, 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 peachy. Saving. Load, sked it. Again, just dropping this in here. Bam, saving. Does it work? Can I have, I see things on the screen. Seems, seems everything is good. Let's save this. And sprite it, I'm pretty sure we already did, but I'm just like, just in case, I'm gonna be thorough here. Absolutely, we did it. Although we could do it a, a bit different here. We're using, we have like this changed MSPR function here. Okay, good. By the way, there is a, a weird, uh, there's a backup schedule backup here. I think we can delete this now. We don't need that anymore. Just like to let you know if you're looking at the GitHub why a file suddenly uh, disappeared. Hi, this is Christian from the future. I'm a bit wet. It's been raining outside. Anyways, uh, I wanted to do like a lightning round of things that I noticed while editing the videos and also things that people posted in the meantime. So let's go through a bunch of little small fixes and changes. I think the biggest one that we want to be doing is the following. Uh, the direct bomb should be hitting all of the enemies, not just the enemies in range. That's kind of like the difference. The normal bombs, the hyper bomb should hit only the enemies that are enclosed by the explosion. The direct bomb should hit every enemy. And we do this in here. So hmm, let's see if uh, not hyper or right. I think that that should should. So let, let's let's do the test here. Oh man, we have to start with some charge. All right. So I'm gonna go in the corner here, and that sh that hit every enemy. Okay, that was the idea. Next up, so we have the ship print, the shadow print, but now we also have outline print, and I think the ship print we actually don't need that anymore. Uh, let me look for instance of ship print. There is none, so we can just delete the ship print, whatever. And then the, the outline print is the new master now. Another thing is that here, when you're drawing the lives, we forgot to add the uh, the, the the shadow line. Uh, so let's do a comma six there, and you can see now there's a shadow on the on the lives indicator as well. That is sweet. Another thing I notice is when we are doing um, when we're shooting at the enemies, um, I want to make sure that the enemies flash even if they are hit uh, in the dead zone. That is something that I think we kind of like accidentally removed. So like here, um, if the enemy is above in the screen and he, he gets hit. Uh, while he's in the dead zone, he still still should flash. He just shouldn't receive any damage. That is a little bit awkward. So the way I will probably do this is just simply just like add the flashing on top, right? Because the fla we're adding the flashing when the enemy gets hit normally, but we also do the flashing when we hit the enemy like this, and it will just get overwritten. It's fine. Uh, maybe we can remove it from getting hit, but also like getting hit by the bomb is good. I don't know. It's mm, it's a bit awkward. Um, but yeah, let's just do it. This is the uh, um, I think this is the aura hit. So we also could should 
do a flashing here. So yeah, we just com copied the E flash a little bit, re repeating this a little bit. It's fine. Let's see if we can make this work. Uh, it's hard to see, but at least there's no no crash or anything, right? Okay, uh, in the do parts, because we converted the part, uh, like do part, we converted that into do parts, and in this case, we don't need the P anymore. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, do parts, and I think when we're calling it, it's also, yeah, yeah, here it is. We don't need that anymore. Uh, those times are over. Uh, here in the bomb phases, so this is the bomb phase one and two, right? So we're checking if bomb phase equals two and we do stuff. And then we don't end. And then here we could do also an else if here. Else. We could also probably, yeah, yeah, else if. Else is probably better. Uh, I think that that saves us a token, I think. Is, does it save a token? Nope, it doesn't save a token. <laughs> oh well. Um, but we probably could go like this, like this, right? So that, that would save us a token. Let's see if this still works. Yeah, it's fine. All right, moving on in the do picks, we, there's a little bit of a tweak that we can do here. Yeah, here, uh, we could combine this under an else if, right? And that uh, means that we can do one less end at the end here. That is just a little bit, a little bit more efficient. Whoops, didn't want to do that. I want to just like, can I, can I do a shift tab? Yes, please. And then here, shift tab, perfect. Okay, let's see if this works. Just checking if there's some, any kind of, there is a pickup, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Everything is good. Okay, one big mistake that I did is that, so the enemies are burning now, right? And we delete all of the, the flames when the enemy gets exploded, but we don't delete the flames when the enemy gets just like leaves the screen, right? The enemies, the, the flames still persist then. Uh, so we probably need, um, it, I think it would be a good idea to maybe do like a unified delete an enemy uh, function. So let me see where we're doing this. So it's hit enemy here, right? And then uh, here is where we're deleting the enemies and then we're deleting all of the, the burns, right? So what I'm thinking here is we're gonna combine these. We're gonna do like a del n e. And then here right underneath, we're gonna go function del n e. I'm gonna put it in here, right? So that will just delete all of the um, all of the burning stuff, all of the flames that they were attached to the enemy. That will just delete them, and also it will delete the enemy. And then uh, I will I probably want to do it later, I just like just in case. And then the del n we also do when the enemy leaves the screen. Here, here we where we when the enemy leaves the screen, we just gonna do like a del n e like this. Again, let's try this. We want to see enemies leave the screen. The enemies are leaving the screen correctly. I want to make the enemy burn. The enemy is burning. Well, we didn't see anything, but I'm assuming it works. <laughs> I'm just gonna assume it just works. Yeah, at least there's no flames hovering in, in, in the screen, so I, I, I guess it worked. <laughs> Right, so now when we're drawing the shots and the hyper is on, what we're doing here is we're doing these two pulse statements to, to turn the shots white. Uh, and I think it's a good idea to just use the white flash function for this that we have, like the white flash um, table, uh, the, this one, right? We can just simplify this a lot simpler, <laughs> just doing something like this. And that saves us some tokens and we get to reuse stuff that we already had. So yeah, this works the same. And we're just turning everything white when we're drawing the thing, drawing the shots. I think this is cool. Another thing is like I think in, when we're drawing the hyper circles, I think I think we can remove this if statement because if like uh, if high circ is nil, then just nothing happens. I think. Let 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 me see. Yeah, it's it's fine. Uh, 
it's fine. We don't need to see if, if uh, high circuit is nil. If it's nil, then that entire loop just doesn't happen. Another little tweak here when we go 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 over, right? Um, we can we can save a token by just removing the brackets because if you're supplying a string, then you can leave out the brackets. We do that the same thing already with the game over, but we could also do this with finished. And then finally, when we do the start game, I made like this point of making like this uh, SSCR, so we, we can specify at which scroll value we're starting the game. That's fantastic. But then I just like go ahead and just like make sure that it can like it defaults to a zero if it's not set. It's fine, dude. It's fine. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have a lot of situations where we start the game without specifying the scroll value. Or at least we don't don't have it right now because we're always grabbing a scroll value from from our table right from here from this main menu table so i don't i don't i don't think we need that default thing and if we, if we need that default thing we can just supply a zero right it's fine uh it's uh it's, it was just like i don't know this little complication there now that is all from christian from the future and i shall transition over to christian from the past who will talk about the master plan <laughs> All right, the mighty master plan. Oh man, this this has been this has been a while. So prototype debriefing, we did the GUI, we did the state machine, which means the menu and stuff like that. We did better shots and option systems. We did pickups. We did bombs uh, uh, and pop ups and everything. So this is fantastic. We actually did a lot more. Uh, even the options is not even in here. Oh, the, the option system. Oh, it is. Uh, there's some leftover stuff. UI for scoring. Yeah, and we do, did a pass on the UI. So we, we kind of already did that as well, right? Do we need a do we need boss phases, boss spawning, minions, hover effect? All of these, all of these are related to questions surrounding the boss. And I cannot solve these questions, I cannot implement those systems without actually having a boss. So would I would have to create a boss for that. And I think. The best place to find out how to solve these things is, that's right, in the next goal. We're going to move these things over. We're going to move these things over. Make the game. Yes! So, boss, I'm going to add in here boss questions. Do we need boss phases, boss spawning minions, and hover effect, and so forth. Um, but for now, here's the goal for the next, next sequ sequence, for the next step. Make a playable level until the first boss fight and then make the boss fight. <laughs> I want to be able to play uh, up until that, um, that place where the crashed UFO is. I want that UFO to go up and then I want to fight the UFO and then when the UFO explodes, I want to have the end screen, right? I want to, want to have like the level until that point, right? That's all that there is to do now. Now, there we planned a lot more. We planned a second level on, on the farm and then maybe all, there's gonna be a third level, all those, these things, but I'm gonna do an executive decision executive decision this tutorial here will end at this first boss fight officially it will end at that first boss fight this is going to be a similar situation the way we did it if you watched it the pork like tutorial where i did like a tutorial a version of pork like and then i went into my own cave development cave and came up with the official version of pork like i'm gonna now create a level up until the first boss fight create a boss fight so i have like a whole shmup level and that's gonna be the tutorial so to speak and then we're gonna discuss what I learned from this first level. We're gonna we're gonna do a debriefing. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a little systems, little tweaks, something maybe surrounding the boss that we're gonna add. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be plenty of bugs and things that we want to fix. Uh, I will probably do a playtesting session to see how if this works well and so forth. So we're gonna have some debriefing episodes afterwards. Um, I, I will also do a, like a, like a playtest checkbox, a playtest. All right. So that's all that is left to do, just make the game and make the game. This has been a pretty jumbo episode for a jumbo tutorial. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here. And yeah, so the next episode is going to be more of a dev diary like we did with the prototypes. Uh, so you don't have to watch me, you know, clicking away at the level editor for hours on end. And for now, I'm going to say a big thank you and a huge shout out to all of those people, who, everybody who supported me and this show, who made this show possible. Thank you so much for your support. And for all of the other people who want to support me as well, 
check out coffee.com slash lazy devs. That's the place to support the show and get like early access and stuff like that. Also, I want to do, it's a jumbo episode, so I'm gonna read out a jumbo comment. Jeff A. Cornell commented on the uh, video for Pico 8 version 20.2.6. Those extra sprite sheets would be great for procedurally generated map tiles. For example, the standard 47 tile sets to define edges between two tile types can often be reduced down to five tiles if you're willing to cut and paste the four corners individually, because each corner tile only has one of five possibilities, horizontal edge, vertical edge, uh, outside corner, inside corner, or fully interior. To do that, cut and paste in earlier versions, you'd have to do it on the fly with SSPR statements every single frame that you draw the map. But with extra space, you can do the cut and paste only once in it, or when you load a new level, and use simple map drawing functions for drawing each frame. Presumably, you'd also want to create a duplicate level map in another memory block to convert basic tiles in a level uh, in the editor accessible map into appropriate edge tiles in a secondary map. But then again, that only needs to be done at, at init or when loading the level, and per frame drawing function can just use the map function. That is a fantastic idea for using the extra sprite sheet space. Yeah, you could also like, you don't even have to like split the tile tiles into smaller tiles. What you can also do is uh, stuff like mirroring tiles, like quite often you have to do like the nine nine tile situations where you, you know, do all the four corners and all the four edges to create like frames and stuff like that. Mm, but now you could just like do this procedurally and save it off in a, in a in one of the extra sprite sheets. The only issues I, I have, and I still haven't figured out the best way to solve that, is that when you do that, when you generate your sprite sheet procedurally, you cannot take advantage of the built-in uh, map editor. You would have to use like, like some kind of custom editor because like those sprite sheets don't exist when you're in the editor. They only exist once you launch the game. So there's no way to draw a map inside Pico 8. That's a little bit of a pity. Maybe that's what Picotron is for. Anyway, this has been a long episode. Once more, let us start making it a game. See you next time around.